beginnings at the turn of the century using this rolled up glove and stick. The sport of softball has evolved from a Chicago club sport into a game played in nearly 100 countries. And now, after decades of effort, women's softball will debut in the Centennial Olympic Games. For these lucky U.S. women, the legacies of women's softball pioneers, winning the inaugural softball gold medal will be a dream come true. There's now history where people can grab it and young athletes can be inspired and just say, Softball, it's going to take me where I want to go. The road to Atlanta is within sight, just two months away. We're winning the gold. Today, from Oklahoma City, the site of the Softball Hall of Fame, we'll meet the U.S. Women's Olympic team as they play NAIA champion Oklahoma City next. And now, your host of the Olympic Trials, Robin Roberts. Good evening, everyone. This summer, Atlanta will host more than 3,700 women athletes. That's a new Olympic record. 120 of those women will take part in a new Olympic sport, softball. Over the last decade, USA softball has dominated this game, losing only once in international play. Today, as the Olympic torch makes its way through Oklahoma City, the competitive fires burn bright within each member of our first Olympic softball team. Let's go out to Hall of Fame Stadium and join Dwayne Statz and Tracy Warren. Robin, the torch continued its 15,000-mile trek across the United States, carried in Oklahoma City at the Softball Hall of Fame by retired U.S. Air Force Colonel James R. Bob Willis. So the mood in Oklahoma City is festive, especially here at Hall of Fame Stadium, where Team USA will meet three-time NAIA champion Oklahoma City University. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to a sunny, although windy day in Oklahoma City as women's softball takes center stage and for the first time an Olympic competition becomes a medal sport. There is perhaps no active player who better exemplifies that transition then Dot Richardson. Started playing major softball when she was just 13 years old. Now at 34 is one of the oldest U.S. Olympic softball team members. She juggles the dual career of being a doctor and an Olympian, and she was voted the player of the decade of the 80s. Now, if she's the player of the decade of the 80s, Lisa Fernandez should be the player of the decade for the 90s. A three-time player of the year for UCLA. She plays third and pitches, but her bread and butter comes at the plate. She's the best at hitting to all fields. And on the mound today, a treat, four-time MVP National Tournament Championship player, Michelle Smith. Thought her career was over when she fell out of a moving truck just 10 years ago. She has bounced back as one of the fastest pitchers on Team USA. Tops out at 72 miles per hour. Her bread and butter are the curve and the rise. Team USA against the 1996 NAIA champion, Oklahoma City University Chiefs, coming up next. U.S. Olympic Trials on ESPN. Brought to you by Chevrolet, the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet. And by Direct TV, satellite TV at its best. We're back in Oklahoma City at the ASA Hall of Fame Stadium as the 21 City Tour continues for Team USA. The Oklahoma City University Chiefs, the NAIA champions, and here's the lineup for Coach Bill McSpadden, Leslie Hudson leading off, Katie Keniston followed by Jennifer Wells, Tina Holmes, the designated player, Jean Ann Rock in right field, Jamie Whiteman is in center, Heather Strauss is at first base, followed by Bobby Towers at short, and hitting ninth is Julie Mercer playing second base. And Michelle Smith, 3 0 on the tour with two shutouts and an earned run average of zero on the mound. We well, yeah, had mentioned Michelle throws anywhere from 65 to 72 miles per hour. Her changeup comes in about 20 miles per hour slower. There you see the numbers on Michelle Smith. Part of the reason Team USA is so heavily favored to win the gold is their depth at the pitching position. 
defensively for Team USA, a solid defense all the way around. Kim Marr, Laura Berg, and Leah O'Brien in the outfield. Lisa Fernandez, Dot Richardson, Julie Smith, and Sheila Cornell make up the infield. Gillian Box is doing the catching. And Michelle Smith, an Oklahoma State University graduate, is on the mound. This is Michelle Smith. This Oklahoma City University team just home, fresh off their national victory. As a matter of fact, they flew earlier this morning and just arrived in Oklahoma City mid-morning. The USA team so far on this tour with 13 wins and a loss, a little concerned about their offensive output, but you could not prove that the last couple days. They won an exhibition game in Oklahoma City 14 to nothing over Central Oklahoma University and have already beaten this Oklahoma City University team once 23 to nothing. So the bats are coming alive for Team USA. Dwayne, I think you'd probably expect that. This team has been together for now three weeks. They're getting used to the chemistry. They're getting used to one another. They're getting used to the travel. And finally, you can start to see the productivity at the plate. Leslie Hudson, one of the co-captains for the Chiefs, leading off. Michelle Smith is ready. And the bunt down the first base side, handled by Sheila Cornell. Over to cover the bag from second base is Julie Smith. That's one thing that Ralph Raymond, the coach of Team USA, hopes to take away in Olympic competition is the bunting game from the opposition. He says, certainly, if you take away the bunting game, and you can see the defensive alignment now, the ends, Lisa Fernandez and Sheila Cornell, are up to take away that bunt. And Oklahoma City University likes to lay down the bunt. Number one and two. So Fernandez with the quick release, playing about 15 feet in front of the bag. One strike to count on Katie Keniston. And that is strike two. Houston utilizes another technique in women's softball, slapping the ball. When the infield is pressing in, you like to just slap it by them. And right back to Smith. Over to Cornell. Two up, two down. Michelle Smith, one of those highly acclaimed pitchers out of Oklahoma State University, a multi-time All-American. She plays ball in the fall in Japan where she teaches the Japanese English and then in the afternoon plays softball as a pitcher and you can bet she dominates in Japan as well. She has a dual residency in California and also in Japan. She throws the first pitch by Jennifer Wells, the Oklahoma City University catcher. Two strikes to count. Wells is the leading home run hitter on the Chiefs. Another of the co-captains. And is out on strikes out in front. So a one two three inning for Michelle Smith. We go into the bottom of the first with Team USA coming. Back at Oklahoma City. Bottom of the first inning with Team USA coming in to hit. And the USA lineup for Coach Ralph Raymond. Dot Richardson, the heart and soul of this team leading off at short. Julie Smith at second, followed by Lisa Fernandez. The cleanup hitter in left field, Kim Marr. Sheila Cornell will be at first base. The designated player is Deona Harris. Gillian Box will do the catching with Leah O'Brien in right field and Laura Berg in center field batting ninth. And the pitcher for Oklahoma City is Tammy Braithwaite, a grad student after playing her college softball for the Chiefs. Defensively for Oklahoma City University, Katie Kanastin, Jamie Whiteman, and Jeanne Bruck in the outfield. Leslie Hudson, Bobby Towers, Julie Mercer, and Heather Strauss in the infield. Jen Wells, the highly acclaimed Jen Wells, is doing the catching. And the fifth-year senior, Tammy Braithwaite, on the mound and a tall order before her as she has to face 
the ever feared Dot Richardson. Richardson leading off the senior member of the USA team 34 years old. She has been a national player since she was 13 years old. Started playing softball when she was just 10. And the first pitch is high ball one. She was 10 years old had a little league coach approach her after seeing her play catch one day and ask her if she would like to join the team. She thought wow what a great thing until he said you know we could probably cut your hair and call you Bob and she says wait a minute I don't think I'll do that. But the next day was invited to play softball and has been a premier player her entire life. Two balls and a strike the count. Dot Richardson, the premier leadoff hitter. Fundamentally, she's got a great stroke, compact swing. Emotionally, she's got the firepower, the stick to itness that you like. And she draws the walk. So the leadoff hitter Richardson is aboard. And we'll want to keep an eye on Dot Richardson, who has some speed. And keep in mind, she is an orthopedic surgeon. She works with those hands you see clapping. And her favorite way to slide, head first, with the hands going into the base. Julie Smith, the pitch to her is inside ball one. That's bad enough for a shortstop to go head first. That's less an orthopedic surgeon. Now, Ralph Raymond, you'd think conventionally in the game of softball in the college ranks, you would just bunt Dot Richardson over. And she puts down the bunt and will beat it out. Hudson coming in from third to make the play. Richardson moves into second. Julie Smith safely aboard. These are the table setters that Ralph Raymond said are so important to Team USA. Both have speed, both have the versatility to hit away or lay down the bunt. And watch Julie Smith, the Fresno State graduate, an angled bat, soft hands, quickly motors down the line, and they are safe all around. So Smith has the first hit of the game. And here is Lisa Fernandez, 25-year-old third baseman and pitcher. And that's going to be in there for a base hit. Richardson will score. Smith hitting third. She'll be held there on the RBI single by Lisa Fernandez. And Team USA breaks out in front 1-0. So the walk, the bunt single, and now an RBI single by Fernandez. I've seen Lisa, the Olympian, be a lot more vocal than she was in her college years, and she's been very aggressive at the plate. A couple of times I've seen her go after first pitches, whereas Lisa the Collegian would wait to get in the count. She's been very aggressive. Ralph Raymond told us she's been slumping of late, but what we've seen today, she's hitting the ball well and hitting it to all fields. Here's Kim Marr. Marr known for her power and in that fourth spot. Start of the day leading the team and runs batted in. A ball, no strikes. Mar, 24 years old, out of Fresno State. A chop to short, towers to second one. Not in time for the double play as Julie Smith crosses the plate. And it's two to nothing. Mar picks up the run batted in. Fernandez forced at second for the first out. So Fernandez and Marr have chased home the runs. Marr sets up at first base. And the hitter becomes first baseman, Sheila Cornell. Also 34 years old, had played with Dot Richardson at UCLA. She is just the opposite of Dot Richardson. Dot Richardson is called the tiger. Sheila Cornell is called the silent lamb because she is very so quiet, leads by example, but really has a lot of power and does lets her bat do all the talking. No ball, no strikes. One out, two runs home in the bottom of the first. 
This one off the plate. Two balls and no strikes. Tammy Braithwaite, of course, really recognizes Sheila Cornell and her power, trying to keep it away from that power zone, go to the outside. Cornell has just two home runs so far in this tour. Down to third. Hudson takes it to second out there, and the double play is good this time. Hudson, Mercer to Strauss around the horn, 5-4-3. USA settles for two at the end of one, 2-0 two USA. Michelle Smith on the mound for Team USA. Happy to be obviously on this team and happy just to play this game. Back in the summer of 1986, suffered uh, arm injuries, severing muscles and nerve endings when she was thrown from her father's truck and has made her way back. And a major part of the USA Olympic plans. First pitch is a strike to Tina Holmes, the designated player. Holmes hitting cleanup. Oklahoma City University down one, two, three in the first. It was at that time Michelle Smith thought her career was over. Not her life was in danger, but her softball career would come to an end. She worked hard. She did not even redshirt, and she came back. She said she pitched better the year after the injury. She said she was able to put things in perspective. And Cornell takes care of this one. She understands how important this game has become to her. I think the scariest thing was I had a, my whole identity was softball at that point in my life. And um, when I came that close to losing it, I, uh, it was kind of scary. It kind of woke me up and made me realize that there's a lot of other aspects of my life that I, I became more aware of. And um, it actually made me a better ball player. One strike to count to right fielder Gina and Ruck. Michelle Smith has retired the first four. Michelle says her thoughts today are with her grandmother, Ruth Beal, who's in a Tampa, Florida hospital recovering, and it is her birthday. So she says with each pitch, she throws a little harder, and when you're throwing at 72 miles per hour, I'd hate to be in that batter's box when you decide to throw a little harder. Not much time to make up your mind. The 0-2 pitch is wide. The count is a ball in two strikes. Ruck hit 432 for the year. Jennifer Wells was the leading hitter at 465. Hernandez from third across to Cornell, two gone. So two up, two down in the second inning. Lisa Fernandez, the multifaceted athlete, played both third base and pitcher at UCLA. And for Ralph Raymond, he wanted athletes on this team who could play a number of positions. Julie Smith, the second baseman, also plays third. The outfielders will move around. Center will play left, left will play center. Gilliam Box, the catcher, has played four positions. So Ralph Raymond wanted versatility. He wanted hearts. He wanted guts. And he wanted experience. And by the likes of it, he's got it all. Richardson from short makes the play on the ball hit by Jamie Whiteman. So another ground ball. One, two, three, go the Chiefs. Two nothing in the middle of the second. USA with two runs in the first, leading two to nothing as we go into the bottom of the second inning. Deonta Harris will lead it off. Happy to be here as a newcomer. I was kind of the new kid on the block, and it was a very new experience for me. I had never known I could do so much with softball. And I, I went in with a, with a completely clear mind and just played out of my mind. I mean, I played out of my mind, and I didn't make the team. So it kind of was a setback, and I had to sit back and say, well, I can do one of two things. I can either, A, walk away feeling very disappointed and, and not accomplishing all the dreams that I had, or two, I can work three times harder and just keep pushing along and pushing along until the day comes when softball is an Olympic sport. And I think I chose it. And I think she chose the right thing, too. Deanna Harris is a remarkable story came from Temple University, a school that did not even have a softball field on campus. You had to drive about 25 minutes into North Philadelphia, 
go to the field for practice and and then the Atlantic 10 was not a powerhouse but she did play for the Ray Bestis Braquettes the team that Ralph Raymond had coached and as she said she stuck to it she wanted to make her dream a reality and one of the fastest on the team from Wilmington Delaware Deanna Harris is now all smiles as an Olympian and leading off in the bottom of the second inning a ball and a strike to count that's down two and one she was a late entry into the USA lineup in this game in the first game USA meeting Oklahoma City University Michelle Venturella suffered an injury a shoulder separation she was originally slated to play in this game as well but with that injury Harris is in there in her stead and that's really the first significant injury that the USA team has suffered on this 21 city tour At this point they've been very fortunate in that regard down the right side Ruck on the run but it's going to be out of play out of the reach of the Chiefs right fielder and the count will go to three and two and Ralph Raymond wanted the team to get a lot of games under their belt they will play a total of 55 games in 21 cities to get the team to gel to get their chemistry to keep them sharp and focused they'll wind up in Columbus Georgia they'll take a week off and then they'll come back for the Olympics but you're right Dwayne they have been pretty lucky up to this point regarding injuries but they do have five alternates traveling with them deflected off the pitcher's glove and no play as Bobby Towers made the pickup so Harris is aboard the USA team essentially making its base out of Columbus Georgia and really a smart thing to do as they try to get this team some sense of cohesion they'll go back there as as you mentioned Tracy and and then try to pull together as they enter Olympic competition. Gillian Box, the catcher. Now Gillian, who played for Cal Berkeley, normally a number four hitter. She's got tremendous power. She turns very quickly on an inside pitch. She's down at the number seven position for Ralph Raymond, and he said he wants a little punch at the bottom, and Gillian's job is to provide that. Two balls and no strikes. Box throws well. They're in good shape behind the plate. The combination of Gillian Box and Shelly Stokes. Ground ball out of the reach of Towers in the center. So the base hit. Harris stops at second. Box is aboard with a base hit. So the first two hitters aboard for the USA team comparatively speaking where the USA Olympic pitchers throw about 68 70 miles per hour NAIA pitchers top out about 58 miles per hour Gilliam box really turned on that Tammy Braithwaite offering she's got such quick wrists strong forearms Leah O'Brien O'Brien the right fielder An Arizona Wildcat. Dwayne, I think Leo O'Brien is living every girl's dream for the 90s. She's won two NCAA softball championships with the University of Arizona. Last year, they were runners up. She's an All American in the collegiate ranks. And then when the opportunity came along for her to make the Olympic team, she tried out. And everybody said, Why don't you go back for your senior year and play? She said, No. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm going to go with the first ever U.S. Olympic softball team. She's sitting out at Arizona this year and traveling with the U.S. Olympic team. She has two runners in scoring position now. She's been an outstanding clutch hitter for Team USA. Two balls and a strike. The count will go now to three and one. Barbara Kirby is working the plate. Randy Drew at first, Rocky Arrington, the umpire down the third base side. With a three and one count, Leo O'Brien tremendous under pressure. Let's see what she does here. 
He pops it into left. That will be caught by Keniston. No chance for the tag. O'Brien with a liner to left caught by Katie Keniston for the first out. Harris and Box hang on at third and second respectively. And Laura Berg, the center fielder, the ninth place hitter for Ralph Raymond, will bat here in the second inning. It's a two to nothing ball game. And as a number nine hitter, Laura Berg is like having another leadoff hitter. She's got a lot of speed, quickness, a great eye at the plate. And you'll notice Team USA has a lot of left-handers that come up to the plate. It gives the pitchers something else to look at. China, of course, is considered to be the number one competitor going into the U.S. Olympics. And you want to throw a good mix of left and righties. A one strike count on Berg. A one hopper to short. The runners hold and the throw to first in time towers to Strauss. So with two men in scoring position, two runners in scoring position and nobody out. Great White has retired O'Brien and Berg and now will face the veteran leadoff hitter shortstop Dot Richardson. Richardson walked and scored in the first. Shoots this one foul back to third for a strike. You think Dot would have her fill? She's got three Pan American gold medals, a 14 time ASA All American. She played with Ralph Raymond for the Ray Bestis Breakouts for 14 years while in her residency at the University of Southern California. And how did she get the games? She commuted from the West Coast, where she had a residency, to the East Coast, where the Red Best of Spray Cats are stationed in Connecticut. And this one is out of the reach of Jamie Whiteman in left center, chasing home both runs to make it four to nothing as Richardson winds up at second with a double and two runs driven in. So it's four nothing. Team USA out in front. Richardson with two outs, a clutch hit there. From the left side of the plate, Dot Richardson has great plate coverage. Watch her extension here. The 34-year-old really goes after the pitch. Down and the good stroke to the center field gap, and then she's got the speed to motor and make a double out of it. Julie Smith pops to short, and that retires the side. But two more runs score for Team USA after two, four nothing USA. The torch made its appearance here at Hall of Fame Stadium. Following that, it was carried to the side of the former Murrah Federal Building, the side of that tragic bombing in April of 1995. And there, Mike Downing, an Oklahoma City firefighter who lost a sister in that tragedy. And Jennifer Rogers of the Oklahoma City Police Department paid tribute with a moment of silence. The third inning is underway, and Heather Strauss swings through this one, strike one. Give Michelle Smith a lot of credit. She's getting ahead of batters using that curveball from the left side. And that was her rise, her two favorite pitches. When you talked about the Olympic torch coming through here, I was watching the expression on the Olympic softball team in Oklahoma City. Many of the girls in tears. They are so moved by the emotion of the event. The Olympic team counting the days, of course, until their first game against Puerto Rico in Columbus, Georgia. This one is outside, one ball and two strikes. And this being the first year, the first time Women's softball has been recognized as a medal sport and Olympic competition. And these team members know that they are playing for more than just their own careers and their own satisfaction. And really more than for the United States. They are playing for pioneers of this game. Dot Richardson, who you saw a shot of earlier, epitomizes that. She's been at the game for so long, had even thought of giving it up to just pursue solely a medical profession. She held on, and when it was announced that softball would be an Olympic sport in 1991, she said, you know, I'm going for it. 
People said she was crazy, but she stuck in there. And she says, I'm playing for those before me. The Joan Joyces, the Sharon Backuses, all the pioneers, the Kathy Aronsons, that never had a chance to play in the Olympics. A strikeout of Heather Strauss, an example of a little time you have to make up your mind. She was going for it and chased the pitch out of the strike zone. A foul ball by Bobby Towers. And what makes Michelle Smith so tough is that she mixes up her pitches and the speed of her pitches. She's got the curve that's about 68 miles per hour, the rise that's going to come in at about 72. Now let's not forget she struck out Regis Philbin on the streets of New York with that rise ball. And she's got a curve and a change and has really become a lot more focused. You can see the concentration on the mound from the 28-year-old. And in this sequence, she overpowered Towers first time. The second pitch had Towers way out in front and puts her away on three pitches. Two strikeouts in this inning, and that's three in the game as Michelle Smith has retired the first eight to face her. And that is the second strikeout on a rise pitch. Take a listen. Julie Mercer and a run up on the pitch and she takes it for a strike. With the left handed bat of Mercer in there. Fernandez plays very close down the third base line. From a left handed hitter who is known like Julie Mercer to slap you want your corners in to take away that bunt and slap. Fernandez has got the versatility to move horizontally. You take a look at the defensive alignment. Even the shortstop and second baseman Richardson and Smith are in to cut down the angles. And strike three. So Smith strikes out the side. She has been perfect through the front three. We're headed into the bottom of the third with Team USA leading 4 nothing. Lisa Fernandez will lead off the bottom of the third. 25 year old third baseman from Long Beach California earlier talked about her role as a role model for youngsters. Uh, definitely I think um, you know as USA Olympic athletes we do hold the responsibility to kind of lead the way and and hopefully to, to be good role models for those kids of the future um, to let them know what opportunities they have and, and where they can go and how they can achieve their dreams and and more importantly um, to let them know that nothing can stand in their way if they if they want to be Olympians you know, they, they know that they have to work hard and, and hopefully will be good examples for them. We had mentioned Lisa Fernandez, perhaps the player of the decade of the 90s. As a role model, she has her own softball glove. About a half dozen of these Olympians have signed signature deals for bats, for gloves, for balls. Lisa Fernandez, you'll see her with her red glove on in the field, the Lisa Fernandez model. Come a long way from her teenage years when a coach told her her arms were too long she'd never be able to pitch. She jumps on the first pitch offered from Mitzi Groves the new pitcher for Oklahoma City University. Fernandez two for two in this game two singles and a run batted in. Groves a junior out of Yukon Oklahoma she is on the ballot as a potential academic All-American. This pitch to Marr is out, ball one, outside. Fernandez at first, nobody out. We're in the bottom of the third. There's Lisa Fernandez. In the right center, that's going to fall for a base hit. All the way to the fence, Whiteman will make the pickup. Fernandez is being waved home, and she will score standing up. The throw cut off as Marr winds up at second. And it's five to nothing USA. Second run batted end of the day for Kim Marr. Kim Marr, the Fresno State graduate, has that upright stance, but on this pitch, it is low and away from her. Kim Marr goes down after it. Not going to get a chance to see it, but she slams it in the right center. She's another one with great plate coverage. Sheila Cornell drives this one deep to the opposite field, away from the right fielder, Ruck. Marr will score, and it's an easy stand-up double for Cornell. 
Six nothing USA. Cornell driving in her fifth run on this tour. She hit the ball a long way to the opposite field. Ruck had played her to pull the ball toward right center. Cornell, one of those veteran players, has been playing international ball for 13 years. And she has seen almost every pitch from every pitcher imaginable. And she is one of those players who works at her power game. The long sweeping swing from Sheila Cornell. Deanna Harris takes a strike. That's too high. Harris, 28 years old. Out of Temple University. it up on the right side. Mercer at second will take care of this one for the first down. And holding at second, Cordell. Two runs in the first, two more in the second inning, and so far two runs in the third. Mitzi Groves pitching for Oklahoma City. Gillian Box had come into Cal Berkeley known as Michelle Granger's catcher. Michelle Granger at that time, the fastest pitcher on the college level at Cal Berkeley. She threw in the 72 mile per hour range. Gillian Box has matured into a hitter, very aggressive at the plate, and we had mentioned the strength of her forearm. She's one of the younger players on the team at 22 years old, but she's got the work ethic. I saw her this morning actually working out in the gym with Kim Marr. And both of the players, kind of the youngsters of the team, of course, Krista Williams at 18, the youngster. She drops this one into right field for a base hit. Advancing to third is Cornell and stopping there. So Box is aboard for the second straight time, two hits. First and third with one out. That's what I like about Gillian Box. First time up, single pass shortstop. Next time up, goes the opposite way. So she's one of those spray hitters. Leah O'Brien taking the pitch upstairs. Ball one. O'Brien line to left. Her first time around. And this one will miss. Groves falling behind. Two balls, no strikes. Leo O'Brien, one of those athletes who played on the Super Bowl team, and this was a collaboration of eight teams internationally that played at Columbus, Georgia last August. And it was these teams that played at the same venue in Columbus, Georgia, as the site of the Olympics this year. O'Brien was part of the team that took the gold medal. Hopper into short left, Cowers out. Keniston coming in to make the catch. And will be out number two as the runners hold. Cornell at third and Box at first base. There's Cornell who had doubled home a run. Now six of those eight teams that competed in Super Bowl last year will make it back to the Olympics. We had mentioned China is the favored competitor. They had beat Team USA 1-0 to give them their only international loss in about 106 games. Australia also supposed to have a good team. Tanya Harding, a former UCLA pitcher, is on Australia's team, along with Melanie Roach, a former Oklahoma State standout. They'll have some good pitching, and pitching certainly dominates on the international level. The one-strike pitch, and Berg sends it into left. It'll be caught by Keniston to retire the side. So Team USA again settles for two. We have advanced through three innings in Oklahoma City with Team USA out in front six to nothing over the Oklahoma City University Chiefs. USA was on hand this weekend in Oklahoma City for the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies honoring among others women's softball legend Kathy Aronson. Kathy Aronson, your election and enshrinement in the National Softball Hall of Fame was due to your ability, determination, dedication while participating in national championship play. When I was in college, my uh, grandparents took me here to see the Hall of Fame. 
And we went through it and read all the plaques, and we're, wow, isn't this something? And Grandma, when we left, said, you know, Kath, someday you're going to be there. I went, oh, boy, Grandma, <laughs> it's just a long time away. But you know what, Grandma, you were right. We made it. Thank you. And as we get set to move into the fourth inning, it is our pleasure to have Kathy Aronson join us here in the booth. Kathy, congratulations from everyone at ESPN. It's a special moment, I would think, especially this year because your sport becomes an Olympic sport. Without a doubt, it was uh, definitely a dream come true. And uh, unfortunately, the Olympics didn't happen during my career, but uh, this is the next best thing, or maybe even better. <laughs> Many of these players say they represent you the trailblazers in the sport. You were on in the 70s and 80s, a great spokesperson for fast pitch softball. And when they take the field, they take it for the Kathy Aronsons and the Sharon Backuses. How do you feel about such a tribute from these Olympians? That shows the kind of class they have. Uh, they're very aware of our history and uh, who played before them. And uh, we really appreciate there are a lot of players out there who will be at the Olympics, Hall of Famers, and people who didn't get to the Hall of Fame who contributed in many ways, who are going to be there pulling for me because we realize that this is really a family sport. Once you're a softball player, and once you play on the Breakettes or on, on Team USA or whatever club team, you're always a part of the family, and that's important, and we really appreciate that. Kathy, you had played under Ralph Raymond for the Ray Bestis Breakettes. You were also instrumental in picking out some of these team members for the Olympic softball team. Give us your assessment of these 15 women. I, I, at this point, after watching this weekend, I think we did a doggone good job. I don't know that we could have uh, gone wrong, though. There's tremendous talent in the country. I know that uh, it was the hardest thing I'd ever done is, is to try to pick out 15 plus 5 alternates out of the incredible talent pool we have. But uh, we're really proud to watch them hit on this weekend. This is incredible. They have been so impressive. They need to keep it up and keep working hard and keep focused on the gold, uh, I know there are a lot of distractions out there. It's our first time having this kind of attention, but uh, the talent is, is, is superb. I know the players, uh, Ralph does a great job preparing teams. Nobody has won as well as Ralph has. That was one of the greatest privileges of, of my career was to play for him. So, you know, I have no doubt he'll have them ready and uh, the gold will come to the USA. We're in the fourth with Team USA leading six to nothing. Michelle Smith. Three and two to Leslie Hudson. And a tap third base side for Lisa Fernandez. A high throw and down on the bag comes Cornell. Danny Tyler, a member of this USA team, spoke, Kathy, about something you mentioned earlier, thinking about the players Do of the past. you know of the players that have played in the past, the Kathy Aronson, the... Mickey Davis is, um, these are people that have given their heart and soul, and I feel like there's a part of them in us and that we're playing for them. And uh, it's an honor, it really is, and uh, we'll hopefully do our best and come out and win the gold, not just for us, but for all the players that have been there behind us. Pretty much sums up your thoughts earlier, and, and I think what all of these young women think about their role on this the first year the women's softball team will be a medal sport in Olympic competition. Leslie Hudson drawing a walk after that chop to the third base side ruled foul so she's on with a walk becoming the first base runner for the Chiefs. Snap throw down to first and they have picked off Hudson breaking in from second base Julie Smith behind the runner and Gillian Box picks off Hudson. And there you see the arm of Gilliam Box in the decoy of Sheila Carnell. Gilliam Box comes up upright in her stance, pumps the strong arm and the decoy by Cornell. Smith sneaks in from behind, lays the tag on, and Leslie Hudson finds herself on the bench. Kenniston takes this one down. So the bases are empty following the walk, the pickoff of the runner at first base. A ball and a strike now on Kenniston. And again, the corners are tight as Michelle Smith works to the Oklahoma City left fielder. Kathy, your forte, of course, was on the mound. You had struck out some 4,000 batters in your career, including Reggie Jackson in 1981 on national television. Part of USA's strength is 
from the pitching position, we have five tremendous pitchers evaluate some of the talent we see on the mound. What I, I really admire about our pitching staff is that they're very different. Uh, each has their own strong points. Uh, Michelle is a great all-around pitcher. She throws very hard. Uh, she has excellent movement on all of her pitches, and she changes up well. Uh, Michelle Grange is very dominating. She's got a unique motion with tremendous power, a great rise ball. Lisa Fernandez is more of a finesse pitcher. Her, her change of pace is by far the best in the world. She's a tremendous competitor. She's someone I had a chance to play with and loved having a teammate because you knew that nobody would give more than what Lisa does on the field. Lori Harrigan is a combination of kind of all of them. She's kind of a flashy pitcher, very good speed, um, a little inconsistent on her movement, but when she is on, she may be right in there among the best in the world, without a doubt. And um, Krista Williams, the very the young 18-year-old, who I understand the first time you saw her, you said, wow. I did. I think Krista is, without a doubt, the, f the future of USA softball. And I don't want to lay the huge comparisons on her because I think she's going to make a name for herself. She has got tremendous poise to go with her talent. And you don't see that in many young athletes. To play at this level at her age and experience is amazing. She has a great head on her shoulder. She's very focused. She has great movement on her pitches. She throws, has overpowering speed, and she's going to keep getting better. So two more strikeouts in the inning for Michelle Smith, striking out Kennison and then Wells on three pitches. Bottom of the fourth coming, 6 nothing, USA. The USA leading Oklahoma City University, 6 to nothing, as we go into the bottom of the fourth from Hall of Fame Stadium. Team USA scoring two runs in each of the front three innings. We have a new battery for Oklahoma City University. The new pitcher is Dolly Johnson, who has been just superb in postseason play as Oklahoma City University went on to win for the third straight time the NAIA championship on the year 18 and 1 and 3 and 0 in postseason play. And Tara Huco will take over behind the plate. And what a thrill it is for these two girls, both freshmen coming in. And I spoke with the head coach, Phil McS McSpadden. He said, what an honor it is to go out here and be on the same field as Team USA. Sure, we're only working on four hours of sleep, and sure, we won our third consecutive NAIA championship, but the big thrill is to take the same field as Team USA, the first ever Olympic softball team. One strike to count on Dot Richardson. By the way, Dwayne, I don't think Kathy Aronson has stopped smiling yet since she's been <laughs> inducted into that Hall of Fame. And she's a dream come true. And, and I can even remember watching her strike out Reggie Jackson on 60 Minutes. And the rumor is Jackson doesn't want anyone to see that because she struck him out three times. <laughs> I can't imagine that Reggie would have an objection. Could you? <laughs> Dot Richardson behind in the count as she faces Dolly Johnson, the third Oklahoma City University pitcher. Four runs off Braithwaite, the starter, and two runs in an inning off Mitzi Groves. Now Johnson. This one is down. Two balls and two strikes. And I thought just before. Kathy left uh, an interesting thought in that so many of the team members of USA have made the point that they're playing for all of the great players of the past and Kathy said you know as much as they're playing for us we are pulling for them and at 37 years old many people said hey Kathy did you think about giving in a shot going out for the US Olympic team she says it wasn't my time I had my time and now my job is to be a spokesperson and support them and she's doing a tremendous job at that being inducted into the Hall of Fame this weekend. A chop down to short. Towers makes the play to first. Richardson made it close over there. Towers to Strauss for the first out in the bottom of the fourth inning. And everybody wonders hey Dot what are you going to do about medical school or her residency. She's taken a year off August 1st right after the Olympics. Uh, she will go back to her residency at USC. She's got one more year left. And while the USA softball team tours perhaps in Asia, 
in Australia. She will go back to her residency and will have lived the life that many young softball players aspire to live, and that is having a professional career and also being an Olympian, the first time ever. And no one deserves it more than Dot, Dot Richardson. She's in her third year of a five-year residency at USC. Two balls, no strikes to count to Julie Smith after spending time at the Louisville Medical School, UCLA, four-time All-American there. And if you had to have a spokesperson for the first year the women's softball team went into the Olympics, you couldn't find a better one than Don Richardson. She had put a batting cage up in her room while in medical school and some of her apartment Come dwellers on, left notes on her room, please don't take batting practice at 7 a.m. Uh, <laughs> she had the stick to it in this. She had a treadmill in her room. She's about $140,000 in debt, but she has a contract with a couple of the sporting good manufacturers, her own glove, her own bat, the first ever to have her own glove and own bat. And so she's hoping to defer some of that, but also be a role model for youngsters go, who aspire to be Olympians. Come on, now, you score, she's you score. finding that uh, not only uh, other women softball players, men softball players, and men baseball players are preferring this new model glove, double hinged around the heel of the glove. A nice glove for infielders. She says many of the guys with smaller hands have come up to her. And as an orthopedic surgeon, she designed the glove, said, here, I'd like this, I'd like that, and I'd like to have a wrist guard, which she had included, and she's having tremendous success with it. One out, base is empty, 2-2 two -two the count on Julie Smith playing second base. Julie Smith, a shining star in her own right at Fresno State. Here was a team under Margie Wright, who we should mention is an assistant coach for the U.S. Olympic softball team, but has remained with her Bulldogs as they trudge toward the Softball College World Series. She was tremendous part of the infield with Martha Nossinger, an All-American. She, I remember one time at the College World Series, Julie got bopped in the nose, her, broke her nose, came back the next day with a mask on, got a single, and then decided, you know, I can't see the ball good enough. I'm going to take it off and play with a broken nose. And she is another one who has the guts and the glory to be an Olympian. Pops it into short left, and it's misplayed by Keniston. Smith, hustling all the way, winds up at second base. So an error charge to the left fielder. Puts another USA team member in scoring position. Katie Keniston, the junior, is charging the ball, but obviously some miscommunication from Bobby Towers coming out from shortstop, and usually it's outfield over infield. 25-year-old Keniston puts Julie Smith aboard. Here's Lisa Fernandez. We've seen Fernandez reach base twice in this game, picking up a run batted in and a run scored. And play well down to third, but over and above that, she is an outstanding pitcher. Out of UCLA, four-time All-American, 93 wins at UCLA and only seven losses. And remember, as a pitcher in college, you're pitching from 43 feet. In international softball, it is 40 feet and with a different ball. Dwayne, we had mentioned what a good hitter Lisa Fernandez, situational hitting. As you had phrased earlier, now with Julie Smith on second, the ideal is to hit it to the right side to move Smith and take a look and see what Fernandez can do. Maybe she's looking for to drive an outside pitch. She lifts this one deep to center. Whiteman all the way back, and this one is gone. Lisa Fernandez. Hitting a two-run home run. She is perfect today, three for three. She started the day with one home run on this tour through the first 13 games and has just hit one out straight to center field. That brings up Kim Meyer, Jim Cornell, Dolly Johnson throws a rise ball to Lisa Fernandez, and when you have the power of a three-time player of the year, you're going to turn on it. That is what you call your power alley. Lisa. 
And Lisa Fernandez is all smiles. We had talked about Dot Richardson. She is best friends with Dot Richardson, rooms with her in the offseason. They've got a tremendous work ethic. And Lisa Fernandez was working out with UCLA, her alma mater, in the springtime on her hitting. And you can see as she's starting to find her comfort zone. So it's eight to nothing as Kim Marr lines one into left, and this one is caught by Keniston. Marr hit the ball on a line. And she's the second out. So Keniston comes up with that play. You saw the good short, quick stroke of Kim Marr. And with the pitcher so close and the speeds being what they are, it's so important to have that short, quick stroke. Sheila Cornell lifts it into deep right field, back to make the catch is Ruck to retire the side. Two more runs score for Team USA. We're through four, eight nothing USA. The U.S. Olympic Trials softball continues. Once again, your host, Robin Roberts. Welcome back. When she was 13, USA softball shortstop Dot Richardson was the youngest player on the U.S. national team. 20 years later, she is the senior member of a squad that has won three world championships in a row. As Richardson looks toward her Olympic future, let's look back at the road she has taken toward her goal. Robin, since she was 13, Dot has won 14 ASA All-American honors while pursuing a career in medicine as an orthopedic surgeon. I mean, there is no way that Dot Richardson alone could have accomplished what she had. And it basically, it has to do with them supporting me, understanding me, flying back and forth, and missing games when I had to, uh, getting coverage, and, and those colleagues able to cover for me and me to pay them back and help them in manipulating schedules. And through medical school as well as a residency, we had to do it, but it was worth it, and I would not change it. I would not, and I'm so glad that it's worked out uh, in both areas. And Dot Richardson now proclaimed by Coach Ralph Raymond really as the catalyst of this team. As Dot Richardson goes, so will go Team USA. She has become the unofficial spokesperson for the team. Greets everyone with a smile and a hug, and she, she loves what she's doing with all the travel. People say, when do you sleep when you put in 20-hour days? She said, I sleep on the plane. You can learn to sleep in any position, any place, any time when you're pursuing what you love to do. And Dot Richardson has got more energy, and it seems like the 14 others combined. Team USA leading eight to nothing, a ball and a strike to count to Tina Holmes leading off the fifth inning. Facing Michelle Smith, who has six strikeouts through four innings. And the count now a ball and two strikes. So an eight run deficit for Oklahoma City University as they hit here in the fifth inning. And under the rules of the game in women's softball, this very well could be the final inning. As Holmes goes out on strikes, that's three strikeouts in a row recorded by Michelle Smith, seven in the game. She has faced just the minimum number of hitters, a walk to Lisa Hudson in the fourth, but Hudson was promptly picked off by Gillian Fox. So a strikeout here of Tina Holmes for the first out, and now Lisa Cooley will pinch hit for Jean Ann Ruck. And a bunt attempt is fouled up the right side, strike one. A big credit to Ralph Raymond, the 71-year-old Olympic softball team coach. Also, Ralph Weekly has joined him on this tour. Ralph, normally the coach of Tennessee Chattanooga, Margie Wright. And Shirley Topley is traveling with the team. And what a great job Ralph Raymond's done. He was the coach of the Ray Bestis Breakettes and says this is going to be his swan song. 35 years coaching, 29 years at the Ray Bestis Breakettes and in between two quadruple bypass surgeries. And he said this is the pinnacle of his career. Down still two strikes on the pinch hitter Cooley. 
He's talking retirement, but trying to keep that door open just a bit. But maybe I might keep the door ajar. If there's something that I can do to help any youngster along the way, I feel that's my duty. Youngster's one of the reasons he's thinking of retiring. He has 13 grandchildren. He said the other day he's missed birthdays and backyard cookouts, and it might be time to concentrate on that. Cooley striking he out. He's from New England with the Aja. Can you, uh, yes, and his whole is. team talks to him about the the New England draw he has as the coach of the the former coach of the Ray Bestis break. Jamie Whiteman, one strike the count. And all these women say he's like a father to them. They love his spaghetti dinners. His wife now is in Columbus. That has become the team's temporary home for four months, says they go on this 21 city tour. He expects nothing but the best. One ball, one strike to count. Upstairs. Two outs with the base is empty. And should Michelle Smith retire the Chiefs without a run, this game would be over. But stay with us. We have a lot of coverage to continue. There are many great stories associated with this Team USA. This is the first year of women's softball as a medal sport in the Olympics. Smith with two strikeouts in the inning and she's just made it number three. Whiteman out on strikes. Nine strikeouts in the game. One, two, three go the Chiefs. The three-time NAIA champions out in order in the fifth inning and Team USA emerges with a victory eight to nothing the final if there's an eight run deficit after five that constitutes a game so USA with two victories over Oklahoma City University back to back shutouts by scores of 23 to nothing and eight to nothing stay with us plenty of coverage to come from Oklahoma City. Back in Oklahoma City where Team USA has beaten Oklahoma City eight to nothing. We've seen a lot of things go right for Team USA including this five inning no hitter by Michelle Smith. One member of this team we did not see 18 year old Krista Williams who figures very prominently in the Olympic plans. She was so pleased to be a part of this Olympic experience. I felt like you I feel like you always make the best of your opportunities. And my opportunity was to hopefully make the Olympic team. And it's a matter of if you go out there and you take that opportunity and you put it to your best advantage. And I think that I did that. And I didn't know what my chances were in the very beginning, except that all I know is I have to go out there and do my job. And that's what I did. And Tracy, in her very first international competition in the qualifier in the Pan Am Games, two shutouts and one perfecto you can't get much better than that a lot of people might question what is an 18 year old from Houston Texas doing on the US Olympic softball team she has all the tools perhaps the Kevin Garnett in the NBA she is to women's Olympic softball she has six pitches throws 65 miles per hour and helped the junior world championship team win the gold medal Margie Wright was the coach of the team saw her tremendous poise on the mound all the tools and said she is poised to make the U.S. Olympic softball team, and she's proved them right. Tremendous accomplishments by all of the members of this team. 15 regulars, five alternates, but it's not without a price. It is a very difficult road sometimes when it comes to the financial end of things. They are amateurs through and through, so they do not make a penny for participating on the U.S. Olympic softball team, unlike the women's Olympic basketball team, who has a $50,000 stipend per player. These amateur players receive nothing except have their finances paid for them as they travel on this 21 city tour. And perhaps no better example of that than Michelle Granger. I don't think people understand the commitment an amateur athlete makes when they play a sport. Um, you know, if I wasn't married, I don't know how I would handle it because my husband has been wonderful and has been financially supporting me. And um, without him doing that, I don't believe that I could be pitching right now because I'd have to make a living, and you simply cannot make a living and, and um, pitch every day. You, don't, you can't tell your employer, time out, I need an hour or two hours to go throw. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. 
So Tracy, the Olympic experience is more than just the challenge on the field sometimes. For Michelle Granger, her husband is an attorney in Alaska, and what she does to perhaps practice and keep in shape is she practices in the basement of a church. She says she's put more holes in the walls of the basement of the church, but she loves it, obviously maintaining her amateur status. Many of these players have had offers to play professionally, to go elsewhere and play for pay, but they choose to remain amateur and represent the first ever U.S. Olympic softball team. And this 21 city tour will continue for these women as they head toward the Olympics starting in July. The first ever the Olympics will host women's softball in the form of a medal sport. We'll be back with some closing thoughts following this. Back in Oklahoma City where Team USA emerges with a victory behind the five inning no hitter thrown by Michelle Smith who struck out nine along the way received offensive help from Lisa Fernandez three for three three runs batted in including a two run home run in the fourth inning eight to nothing the final Team USA over Oklahoma City University now let's rejoin Robin Roberts. Torch and USA Softball continue their separate tours across America, but they will meet again in Atlanta this summer. ESPN's continuing coverage of the U.S. Olympic trials travels next to Savannah, Georgia, where the U.S. yachting team will be selected. <laughs>